Hi everyone, this is Ashley, and welcome to Octopus Web Scraping Tutorial. Let's get started. Before we get started, open up eBay.com using your own browser, and type the product category in the search bar. After the website finishes uploading, copy that URL. This URL is what we're going to need in this demonstration. Step one. Enter the URLs of the website you would like to scrape. In Octopars, build a new task by clicking Advanced Mode and enter the URL you just copied. And then click Save URL button on the lower left corner. This will bring you to the product category on eBay.com with Octopars built-in browser. Step 2. Create a pagination loop. After the website finishes loading up, you can see the interface is divided into three parts. The workflow box on the left, the setting area on the right, and the interactive view of the website on the bottom. On this website, you can see the product listing are spread over different pages. In this tutorial, I will show you how to extract all product information from all pages. To create a pagination loop, scrolling down to the bottom of the page and find the pagination bar, then click the Page Next button. The command panel called Action tab will show up once you interact with the website with the action of clicking. It will show you what you can do with the selected element. Then select the loop click selected link. Now, go back to the setting area. We need to do a few adjustments. Uncheck both auto retry and Ajax load. Speak to Ajax. Many of you probably are confused. What is Ajax? Ajax stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It means a set of web development techniques that allows web page to update a portion of the content without having to fresh the page. To better understand what Ajax is, let's take a look at a Twitter. Twitter uploads the tweets by refreshing part of the web page. When you scroll down to get more tweets, you will notice just the menu bar is refreshed, and the rest of the web page remains still. That's because Twitter uses the Ajax technique. You are able to see the message immediately by only refreshing part of the page, so it saves you the time from refreshing the whole web page whenever a new message comes in. How can you tell the web page applies Ajax? There are many ways you can tell if the website uses Ajax. The easiest way is to check the browser tab. When you update a web page, if there is a loading sign appears, it means the page you are browsing does not apply Ajax technique. To learn more about Ajax, you can check our websites. I have posted a link down below. Make sure you leave comments if you still got any question. Okay, let's go back to Octopus and finish our scripting task. Click Save to save the process. As you can see, now we finished creating a pagination loop. Octopus will click through each listing page and do the exactly same thing as the action we take on the first page. Step 3. Create a loop item. To click through each detail page and get further information, we need to create a loop item. To create a loop item, select the product name from the list. As you can see, selected element is highlighted in green color. Other similar items are highlighted in red. You need to pay attention here, as you may notice, not all laptop names are found and highlighted in red. This is due to an incorrect expat. Some of you probably are confused about what expat is. Expat stands for XML path language. It is language that allows you to navigate a specific element in XML documents. Why we need expat? Web pages are written by human beings and visualized via a web browser. That said, not all web pages follow the same pattern. It could be difficult for a web scraper to crawl a web page written with messy codes. 
When should we use XPath? When the scripper cannot locate the specific selected field, you need to write an XPath expression to tell Octopars to go get the element by defining its specific location in HTML. You can think XPath as a GPS system, which can help you to get your destination by finding the right path. For example, you want to get the product name, but somehow your scripper extracts seller's information instead. You need to write an XPath and help your scripper to find the right location. Don't know how to write XPath? Octopars has a built-in XPath generator, which allows you a hassle-free web scripting experience. To learn more about XPath, you can check our website. The related links are listed below. Make sure you leave comments if you still have any question. Now, let's go back and finish our scripting journey. In this case, we need to come back and fix the XPath once we finish creating the loop item. Okay, so click select all command from action tips. Follow the tips and select loop click each element. This will tell Octopus to go through each detail page inside the loop item list. Now, we still need to go back to the setting area and adjust the setting. Uncheck Ajax load. Now, we have a loop item with all parts of the details page. We need to fix the X path. This will tell Octopus to locate the element and avoid a situation of incomplete extraction. To do this, we need to come back to the loop item on the workflow and go to the setting area. I have already prepared the XPath for the purpose of demonstration. Copy this XPath and paste this expression at variable list. I have also attached a tutorial of how to write an XPath down below. Click save to save the step. Now, we have a loop list with all the detail pages. Octopus will click through each page and do the exact same thing as the action we take on the first item. Step 4. Select the data you need. Now, we need to select the extraction field. As you can see, we have created a loop list with all detail page in the list. Now, we need to create an action inside the loop item, which will tell the robot to extract the data within the page. To extract the data, click the element. For example, in this case, we select the name of the product. Click Extract Text of the selected element. Click Seller, then click Extract Text of the selected element from the action tip. Click Condition, and then click Extract Text of the selected element from the action tip. Now, you can preview the extraction from the data fields and edit. In this case, we added a name. Click Save to save the step. Step 5. Run the task and get the data. After finishing setting up the rules, we can run the task by clicking Start Extraction. Then select the local extraction to run the task. You can check the scripting status and the data has been extracted from the extraction panel. Thanks for watching. Please leave us a comment down below if you have any questions.